What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and I hope you're all doing well today. This is a very, very strange time of year. While spring is definitely one of my favorite seasons because it means I get to start my pepper and herb garden outside, in Azeroth it's kinda different. Like uh, bunnies running around pooping out eggs filled with chocolate that people are willing to trade valuable items for kind of weird. That's right, Noble Garden is back for one week, so I figured I'd put together a sort of little mini guide of some tips and tricks that I have for this event. So thank you for joining me today, now let's get ready for an extravagant expedition. And yes, there will be a lot of egg puns, you've been warned. This little video on Noble Garden will go over a few tips and tricks that I have for this week-long event, as well as some of the rewards you can earn and ways you can make a bit of gold. I'll do my best to go over all the useful bits of info I can think of for this holiday, but if you have any others you're aware of and want to share, then feel free to mention them in the comments section. So Noble Garden is a pretty simple holiday, with one main currency used to purchase the various rewards, Noble Garden Chocolate. These are used to purchase various event-specific cosmetic rewards, some toys, pets, and even a mount. To earn Noble Garden Chocolates, you'll be going around on a hunt through various low-level zones for brightly colored eggs. While you can search in Azure Watch, Dolinar, Goldshire, Karnos, Brill, Razor Hill, Bloodhoof Village, Falconwing Square, or Shatrath City, you'll most likely find that Razor Hill, just outside of Orgrimmar for Horde, and Goldshire, which is just outside of Stormwind if you're Alliance, to be the best locations to farm these eggs. Now, you might be wondering why I would say these two locations would be ideal. Well, the more people that are in an area collecting brightly colored eggs, the faster they respawn. This means that, albeit exceptionally boring and not quite in the spirit of going on an egg hunt, you can really just camp a single egg spawn indefinitely as long as there is enough players around doing the same thing, and that spawn rate will be faster than most of the time of you running around to each of the egg locations. Now, if you are able to, you can nab a couple eggs at a time, though I'd say that if your respawn rate is fast enough that it'd be in good spirit to use only one so someone else can take advantage of the zone-wide hyper-respawn effect too. If there aren't that many people around though, then you'd be best off finding locations where multiple eggs will appear in the same general area that you can click on. There are often quite a few spots where you can hit a couple at a time or even three or four at a time in several of the egg zones, though they're often heavily contested for this exact reason. For instance, in front of Goldshire in the horse trough, you can click on a number of eggs without even moving. And as a member of the Horde, you'll find a number of spots in Razor Hill where you can reach like three, maybe even four eggs at a time. Mainly behind the barracks near this large rock formation, or directly next to the Noble Garden vendor in front of the inn. The fountain at Falconwing Square in Silvermoon is another popular little spot, though again, popularity often means competition. A quick reminder too you won't be finding any eggs inside of the main buildings, or really any buildings at all. Though they can be under tables, or wagons, or in barrels and stuff like that, so keep your eyes peeled. This video isn't over easy just yet though, as I did think up a few tricks that might help you with your egg endeavors. You know what I mentioned earlier there are numerous rewards? Well, some of them are basically account-wide. The Swift Spring Strider mount is a whopping 500 chocolates, but once you learn it on any character on your account, it'll be usable by any of your characters. You can also sell it on the auction house, but it must be on the realm you found it on. For other sources of account-wide gold earning potential though, the Noble Garden bunnies tend to sell for a pretty sizable amount of gold, especially once the event is over, though they do cost 200 chocolates each. The spring rabbits, on the other hand, aren't worth nearly as much, but both of these battle pets can be recaged on a different character and sold separate from the realm that it was earned on. This means that if you're on a low population or relatively inactive realm, you can instead make a character on a high pop server to take advantage of those extra fast respawning eggs. The easiest way to do this would be to simply make an allied race character, as they start at level 10 and are immediately sent to the major capital city for each faction. This makes it a quick little drive down to Razor Hill or Goldshire respectively, since you can use ground mounts at 60% speed, unlike on a level 1 character. This will allow you to have a full-fledged character on any realm you want, and once you find a nice and busy egg collecting town, you'll be able to just sit back and spam right click and potentially die of boredom because you will need a lot of chocolates to buy all the stuff you may want. The only downside to a fresh level 10 is their bag space is pretty limited, which can feel like an existential crisis if you're used to having like 120 or more bag slots on your main. Alternatively, if you want to actually enjoy the hunt for eggs and chocolate while still potentially having a really fast farm, you can opt to find a lower population server to make a character on. 
This can still be a bit tedious, but it does involve actually participating a bit more in the event rather than just staring at a wall for an hour like a kindergartner that got in trouble for eating glue or something. Generally speaking, I've found that low population RP realms are very favorable for activities like this, as, if I remember correctly at least, RP realms are still separated to only include directly connected realms. Unlike most of the standard realms around, this means you can only run into players from that realm or group of realms, which immediately cuts down on the potential competition. If you want an extra cheesy way of doing this, albeit a kinda risky one, you can make a druid class trial. Class trials only last for two hours, but they can participate in the festivities of Noble Garden, including hunting for eggs and redeeming the chocolates that you earn for rewards. However, when those two hours expire, the trial character will become locked and you would have to pay for a boost to unlock access to it. So definitely, definitely set a timer or something so you know when you need to spend all your chocolates. Druids naturally make an amazing choice for class trials as you'll have access to flight form and you can interact with the eggs while you're in flight form too. Class trials also get a ton of extra bag space compared to allied races. So that gives you a big advantage of being able to stock up on a ton of eggs before having to open them all. But again, with that two hour trial duration, you're really putting all your eggs in one basket. Speaking of opening eggs, another quick tip for you folks. Use this macro, slash use brightly colored egg. If you use this macro and just spam it or bind it to like your scroll wheel or something, you can crack open all the eggs in your inventory super fast. You'll want to make sure you have auto loot enabled just as a heads up. Though I can't imagine that many folks play with auto loot off. Imagine having to click on every single item in every single window. Dark, dark times, and that's no yoke. I'm sure you'll want to beat me after all of these egg puns, but I do hope sincerely that you're enjoying the beginning of spring as well as some festivities with Noble Garden and WoW. And while this isn't a very complex event, I figured with all the collecting of eggs that it might be useful to have a couple extra tips and tricks, and I hope this information proves useful to you. If so, please consider leaving a like, a comment, or maybe even subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. It's all tremendously appreciated and helps a lot with the channel's growth. And as always, my gratitude to you, my viewers, commenters, subscribers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these Sheba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.